And by the way, I would suggest if uh, this collapse happens, which I think it will, we should actually go for a general election. I don't think anybody has the mandate mm -hmm. to decide behind closed doors the future of, of the UK. You've had some experience um, putting tenders in through through the NHS system um, and trying to actually change how a trust might be run. I mean, just give me some more detail on, on what your experience was like and what you were trying to do. Yes, effectively, when you're uh, working for, for a trust, uh, it's all about compulsory competitive tendering, which means it's like a business. So you've got these two different parts of a hospital. You've got the managerial level, which is effectively like a business, which is managing to, bu managing to a budget uh, and doesn't really, unfortunately, care about life and about curing the patient because they're just working to a budget. It's about money. And then you've got doctors and nurses who are now, as we know, on strike at the moment uh, over the next few days because fundamentally they're not being looked after. And so you have this, this conflict and, and in any system for it to operate, you've got to have an aligned purpose. We haven't got aligned purposes in the NHS. We haven't got aligned purposes in society in general. So you've got businesses that are focused on the individual, the I, that they don't tame the ego of the I or tame the ego of the group, that they're focused on the individuals. And, and that means that, that you have misalignment. And when you have misalignment, you're not going to achieve what everybody wants to achieve. Mm -hmm. so, so the key is to get alignment across all the players in the state and the market. And that can only be achieved if you focus on purpose and, and, and the concept of a civic trust. Mm -hmm. And just going back to the state and, and the, the state's role, I mean, you know, Professor Mazzucato, who I know you've got some some agreement with, but not entirely, talks a lot about, you know, the state being more entrepreneurial. She talks a little bit about, about, about you know, there being a partnership where innovation can happen between state and business and that can actually, you know, leverage better ideas and better opportunity, but with a different outcome, with a different perception of value. What's your sense of, of that idea? I think she's right. Forward? I mean, she talks mm -hmm. about DARPA, developing a lot of the ideas that went into the iPhone, which then gets turned into money by, by Apple, etc. And funny enough, we've got businesses in that space which are doing the same thing. We go to state labs uh, and, and uh, universities in America. And what she's saying is absolutely right, that, that the, the state labs and indeed um, universities are able to innovate. Mm. Uh, but the bit that, that I, I think is slightly missing is the entrepreneurial state is kind of mixing two ideas if you're entrepreneurial you're a risk taker if you're a risk taker are you taking risks for yourself i think it's slightly uh, confused but but the point that she makes is completely valid that 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 people don't need the incentive of making huge amounts of money for themselves to come up with clever ideas they're happy to do it to get recognition mm -hmm. and therefore the, the what i'd add to what mariana is saying is that they should be distributing their responsibility to civic trusts I mm -hmm. get people to innovate, which is what we're doing effectively uh, with, with my partners in America. We want to start putting those ideas into purpose-led businesses mm -hmm. where you, you get people who, who, are who are entrepreneurs, not the mm -hmm. word, who are innovative, who, mm -hmm. who come up with ideas. And therefore, those ideas are used to change society in an asset lot trust. So you're not making huge amounts of money for yourself, but you're taming the ego of the self and the ego of the group mm -hmm. and starting to use those ideas to, to transform society, to change the world uh, in which we live. And how does that funding work? I mean, there's some private, some 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 government money coming in, to, in, in a collaborative form? It, it, it's funny, the, the, the whole way money is created, which is very topical at the moment because money is falling apart as we speak. If you're um, the government, you can, as far as I can see, raise money in three ways. Um, you can either tax mm -hmm. from the population and move that money across to the state, or you can actually borrow the money from the markets, or you can create the money. There's three options. Um, and to me, the ideal version is actually the creation option, because uh, if you borrow the money from the state, from, from people, you're actually taking power away from that individual and, and you're almost taking decision making away from in, uh, individuals and, and moving it to the state, uh, which I don't like because that's uh, uh, rem and removing the power from the individuals. Mm -hmm. Actually borrowing money from individuals or is crazy because the state can actually create money. So why is it? It's, it's in the interest of those people that are actually um, lending the money because they can control the state. That's why they want it. But it's, it, it's, it, makes no sense. So the right answer is actually the creation of money. 
But you're going to ask me one minute, if you create money, that's going to create inflation. The answer is no, because uh, to my mind, we've got to run organizations as civic trusts with a conscience. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying is that the purpose of that money is to ensure that people's needs are met mm -hmm. and therefore arbitrarily increasing prices, mm -hmm. which creates inflation will not happen because the purpose of the organization is to meet needs. So the answer is there is another way of looking at money, sure. which is based on uh, the creation of the right type of money, mm -hmm. uh, which will not be inflationary and will enable uh, solutions to be sure. found to complex problems. So how does funding work within the civic trust con context? Because you've got the, the state clearly needs to create funds and deliver those funds into the community. Yes. So, um, and then the community looks after it themselves. Yeah, so so what I, I'd start, yeah, the banks, honestly. most of the money that is currently in a system is actually created by banks. That's the first thing you have to recognize. I put hundred pounds in, they create 700 pounds, which means the bank private individuals, private organizations for profit, for their own interest, are creating huge amounts of money. Now, that's a completely absurd concept because, they're, they're, of course, they're, they're interested in themselves and they're only lending uh, when there's collateral and they therefore they're inflating the prices of real estate, of houses and of financial assets, which is creating the massive inequality uh, in the world that we're seeing. Um, and that's because you've allowed people to literally print money. Now, the concept of Printing money is a sensible concept, but but not for private organisations. It should be for the sake of purpose. So if you apply the same principle regionally, so you create a, a local regional trust, and I understand that, that Michael Gove is now looking at mm. distributing the problem with the levelling up agenda until now, was uh, it was centrally decided who which projects were back but now they're talking about distributing the power so to, that so that so there that, can be more autonomy in the in the regions in in a civic trust setting so what you're yeah. trying to do is create a living being is the best metaphor whereby uh, the, the the money can actually respond to people's needs and you can't do that if you're trying to control uh, a huge organization from the center so you create a, a local civic trust which is regional which is asset locks, so it's not about the shareholders, it's about society in general with a specific purpose. You create accountability via citizen assemblies mm -hmm. that actually hold people to account. Uh, and you start to create good feeling and, and a real living being is a good metaphor, mm -hmm. where people are working together to solve the problems mm -hmm. in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a building of relationships, which is not the way the system currently works. In, in a trusted environment. I mean, a tr this is one of your concerns, isn't it? There isn't enough trust, there isn't enough transparency, and that, that needs to change. Especially right now, I mean, your, your views on what we're being uh, fed in terms of uh, information regarding uh, economic data, for example, is is that you know this isn't the whole truth. And s similarly with what's happened with with Silicon Bank in in its own way, the the whole truth is not being revealed. No, absolutely. Let me give you a couple of examples of that. First of all, um, at the moment we're talking about the FDIC, which is a federal insurance scheme in America, and the FSCS, the Financial Services Compensation Scheme, which is eighty five thousand here. And two hundred fifty thousand dollars in America. So just to be clear, that's what we're all guaranteed but, in in our. That's but, but, the, but are the we? full figure that we're. But we're to told. Guarantee. We are told. Mm -hmm. But if you look in the detail, which I have, it's not the way it actually is. So what, what the way it works is this is not a funded scheme. The, the, the amount of money actually in the funds is a very minor percentage of the liabilities. Mm -hmm. So whilst in America and the UK, it could actually ma possibly save one bank if you get a systemic fault. Nobody's money is safe. Now, mm -hmm. nobody's being told that. And they should be told that because people need to understand their money is at risk, as we're now seeing. Because mm -hmm. and we're still assuming that the F FDIC and the FC FSCS is going to pay up. It can't. Mm -hmm. So, so that we're not just told the truth. People should be told, yes, no, this is not a funded scheme. Uh, your money is not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Another example is the accounting of many of these banks. Uh, and uh, because of the increase in interest rates, um, a lot of the bonds have dramatically fallen off the cliff. They're for worth 40% less than they were. Now, many banks have got these bonds on their balance sheets, but they're not actually telling the market this is the case because they, uh, they're saying they're not what's called marking to market. They're not actually showing the true 40% because they're saying we're going to hold it mm. until maturity. Mm. But that's so the crazy. Situation gets better ultimately. Yeah, but the or question is, but, but that's not within their control because a, a run of the banks can happen at any point in time. Mm. They've got a market to market, but they're not. Mm -hmm. And as soon as a market to market, it, it becomes self-realizing. 
And so the whole system is is just unstable and has to be replaced with a system that actually works. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, what's your sense of what's, how things are going to play out in the next few months, you know, in, in, in terms of, uh, you know, f- the financial market picture generally? So I, mm. th- to me, there are loads of black swans out there. Th- there's any number of risks mm. that can take the banking system down. I think the banking system is going to come down. I think mm. internationally, the dollars is, is vulnerable. I think the pound, everything is liable to, to, to collapse. Mm-hmm. Um, and yet and- the state will step in theoretically that's what we're seeing right now isn't it the the, the state the state wants to step in the, the fed will step in uh you know and more of the same from jeremy hunt in the last few few but, few days but if if they continue to print money uh, the, the issue is this tom they're not dealing with the problem you got what is the underlying cause you can step in but you're going to get the same problem time and time again the system is fundamentally flawed Fractional reserve banking does not work. And we just have to be told the truth. It will never work. You're always going to have this risk of of, uh, privatizing gains and socializing losses, which means the banks take ridiculous risks. They make huge amounts of money from derivatives for the bankers. Here are the poor old people who are paying massive energy prices, massive interest rate prices. Mm And yet you keep them bailing out the banks. I don't think people are going to put up with this time. I think that is going to is not going to happen yeah. because you're going to get social unrest. Mm-hmm. And therefore that has to stop. That we actually have to deal with the underlying problem. Why is this massive inequality happening? It's happening because we've got a system which allows private organizations to create money for the wealthy. Mm-hmm. And, and, and unless we actually deal with that issue. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I would suggest if... Uh, this collapse happens, which I think it will, we should actually go for a general election. I don't think anybody has the mandate mm-hmm. to decide behind closed doors the future of, of the UK mm-hmm. and even wider field. So to me, we have to look at democracy, which isn't working. We have to start saying, let's get people engaged. It's not complicated. The trouble is people are using jargon that people don't understand. We've got uh, It worked with Brexit. Let's actually start to address the issues and get people engaged in massive decisions which can affect all of our futures. Mm-hmm. And as you say, you know, the technology is there to take the temperature on on what people think very quickly which uh, you know is never used no th- there's no reason why we can't i'm not saying that you necessarily have to follow but you need to know what the sentiment is we could ask questions and get uh, feedback in a second mm-hmm. for everybody who's who, who's on the voting register why don't we mm-hmm. i don't know mm-hmm. we, we could actually accurately measure unemployment and inflation we're not so so for, there's a reason why we're not being told the truth is because we never have been told the truth, but now with the technology, we have to use that to tell the truth. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Thank you, Philip.